Testing, testing. You know that one part of your studio where it's like just a buildup of stuff and you're like, don't look at it. I'm always trying to crop it out of the videos. Uh, it's just kind of gotten out of control. And in my case, my hoarding addiction is colored and altered clays. So how I do my reclaim in my studio is I mix all my clays together. I add things to them like iron oxide and stains because I'm trying to get more interesting clays than the ones that you can just buy at the store. However, these clays are always feeling really special and I'm always using them for like special projects. So I haven't gotten around to using them in a while, but that's what we're going to do today. We're going to use up all of my crazy clays. I've got them laid out here. I've got more back there. It's just kind of turned into a chaos. And what a great opportunity to do the next throwdown video. We are going to do the abstract coffee set today. So here's the challenge. For your main make challenge this week, the judges would like you to throw and alter a coffee set. Now that was very easy to say, but I'm sure it's not easy to make. So I've sort of sketched out my idea. I'm going to do something quite organic. Um, with a lot of thrown pieces. And it's a bunch of stuff that I've never done before, which you know, that's what I love to do. I'm going to make these coffee cups that will fit into a thrown donut uh, saucer. Mm, and all these pieces are going to be made from different clays. So I'll have a pitcher and it's going to have a thrown element on the bottom. I'll have a sugar bowl and that has an inserted bowl on the inside. And then the creamer is also going to be thrown in several pieces. So it's going to be 11 thrown pieces to make up the seven items. So it's gonna be a lot, throwing and assembling, but that's what they call for. I'm really excited about this though, because I'm just saying screw it to the brief. Um, I'm sick of using underglazes. You guys have heard me complain about them long enough. So I'm going to do the, project in the way that I want to do it, which is using these amazingly interesting clays, but making what they want me to make, right? So let's talk about the clays. So I have a couple of different things going on here. Firstly, I have these two, which are old mixed clays. This one I believe has a bunch of iron in it and this one, God knows what. <laughs> it's pretty old. Okay, and then we have this red clay. Um, that I've added um, red stain in. I've only got a small amount left though, so I'm not gonna throw any of the vessels with this, but I am going to add some of the details with the red. Then we have some grog. So I hope that you can see that there's red grog. So I made grog out of this clay and uh, sieved it and um, that's what we have here. So this is just a white clay body with the grog in it. Additionally, we have these mystery gl uh, clays that I actually didn't do testers of, so I don't really know what they are. I mean, I can sort of guess based on the color. This one is probably white or gray or like cream and this one's a bit more red. But what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is for the grog ones, I'm going to put the grog into this clay to, um, yeah, add another another thing. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've, I've never done this before. There's, there's several elements to this project that I've never done before, so I'm really excited. Um, but I don't know how these clays are going to look when they're smushed up against each other. So that's, I guess, the part that I'm most worried about, but I really wanna try it. So let's do it. Hmm? <laughs> okay, let's get started. So all my clay is prepped now and I got a little confused as I was wedging everything up. So I kind of had to separate everything and like piece it all together. 
Uh, so I know what I'm throwing with which clay. Normally I wouldn't prepare all the clay ahead of time. I would just kind of grab it as I needed, but because I'm using all these different colors, I wanted to just wedge everything up. So now let's head over to the wheel. Um, in the meantime, I'm gonna keep the clay covered in plastic so it doesn't dry out uh, and then just get throwing. Starting with the biggest one because that's what I like to do. So this is going to be the pitcher. So I'm gonna have my sketchbook laying right next to me so I can remember the shape that I'm trying to make. with that. Oh, no, 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 no. So with pitcher immediately making the spout so that it's going with the flow and yeah, uh, I don't know, pouring nicely. And what I've learned is that as long as the edge is sharp, should pour. Wow, well, that's a bold statement. <laughs> this I'll trim off because remember we're making that edge, so ignore it for now. Maybe I'll just add a little alteration. Happy with that. I feel like I need to add a spiral to this just, just for fun. Okay friends, it's the next day and the pots have dried out. They've dried out completely different um, because you know they're different clays. So the clay with grog in it dries faster. Um, <laughs> I should have known that, but I wasn't really planning for it. So it's a little bit too dry, I'd say. And then uh, some of the pieces are not dry enough to trim. So anyway, it's already almost 4 p.m. today. Anyway, it's Saturday, so I took the day off. <laughs> um, so we're going to see how far we get with them. And I'm going to start with my sugar bowl because it's the most dry of them all. So I need to get that done. So the idea is that this part is going to sit inside of here. And this will be a lid of some kind. I regret not putting a gallery in this because then I could have made a really nice closure, but um, we'll just sort of fit it in somehow. Hopefully, this is the plan. <laughs> so let's get started. It's 
It's gonna be tricky to trim. It's very groggy. Didn't really anticipate. This is not the one with the red grog. This is just one of the random, one of the reclaim. I guess I put like an insane amount of grog in this, like big old chunks. This is how big the grog is. Like, that's too big. That's too big a grog. Why did I put that in there? Like, learn from my mistakes. Don't put giant grog into something you're gonna put on the wheel. It's just gonna make your life difficult. But we've come this far. We're gonna make it. That's gonna have to be good enough. Ooh, I'm worried this is too dry. So this white guy we have to trim to fit in here. So we'll see, we'll see how much we need to trim off. I'd like to sit a little bit lower. This is a little wetter, so it's not so bad as the other one. But it's still pulling up huge chunks of grog. So I added a little coil here, you can see, and I did that not so I can hide the fact that these two are connecting to each other. I want you to see that, um, but there was a little crack there and I don't want that. I want them to look like they're two pieces, but like fused basically. So I added a little coil and now in order to make this clean, I'm gonna need to trim it again. So like wait until that uh, hardens up a little bit. But in the meantime, I can work on this. What I need is for that this rim to be more narrow so that that lid can just sit on top because right now it, the lid is too small. So what if I make this really wet? Probably gonna cause cracking honestly, but let's try it. Like I'm sort of throwing it inward. I mean, not pulling it. I'm just like pushing it, shaping it in. Um, but this could very easily cause cracks. Don't do this, guys. <laughs> Here we go. She fits. I mean, it's like almost too tight now, but that's fine because then we're gonna trim this. Yeah, that was the solution, I think. what we're looking for. It's a proper lid now. Now, shrinkage, question mark, question mark, exclamation mark, I don't know. <laughs> I think I'm gonna trim, I'm gonna add a little design into the top because it's a bit heavy, so I wanna trim some of that away. It can be a little feature. We're moving on to the creamer and it's looking pretty cute. Like this is the idea. We're gonna cut a hole in this so it's not gonna be two solids against another. It's gonna be a ring on a solid, if that makes sense. But let's trim this first. is ah, hard, hard to trim. What are you, giant grog? <laughs> I'll let this one be a little rough. It's okay. Doesn't need to be perfect, it just needs to be interesting looking. So the question is, will two different clays actually stick together. Or will the shrinkage be the death of them? Like, it doesn't even need a handle, you just grab it like this. Okay, shall we do our big boy now? I would be lying if I said I'm not nervous. I'm like really happy with this jug so far, so I feel like I don't wanna ruin it. So the idea is that 
This goes like this. It looks totally disproportionate now, but this is really, really wide. Like I need to trim a lot of this off. And then I might shorten this again because once again, it's like too tall. And then, so it's that. And then this guy goes in here. He might be a little too small because <laughs> he kind of disappears. But then again, I'm gonna cut this into waves. So maybe not. Mm -hmm. We'll see, we'll see. And I'm just gonna trim quite deeply. So it's looking a little bit more proportionate, but I think I need to trim this like a lot. I really only want it to be raised up a little bit. So you see how rough this is? Like that's because of the grog. Like the grog makes it literally impossible to make this completely smooth. But I'm not even gonna try. Like I think I'm just gonna leave it like this. Uh, Cause I think it's kind of cool. And like, you know, why fight nature? Okay, let us finish the day with the cups and saucers. So our little donuts are done. And we can decide later which side is up. So I'll trim these. I've never made donuts before, so hopefully they go okay. I'm thinking I trim my donuts first and then I will trim these so that they can fit inside the donuts. Cause I feel like I'll have more wiggle room with the cups then. Although, is that true? I do want the cups to be nice. Let's, I take it back. Let's start with the cups. So I'm trimming these cups. Like they're way wider than they need to be right now. I had to leave a good base on them so that they could dry, but the idea is that you can't set them down unless they're sitting inside the saucer. So it's gonna be a rounded bottom like the other ones, except he's not getting a foot. That's quite cool. Maybe this will be the top then. Oh, I love it. I was uh, on the fence about these, but I'm loving that. Okay, let's trim these. These are, believe it or not, the only things that are a good trimming, or maybe even they're too wet, because when air gets trapped inside, it creates a nice moist environment so it doesn't get dried out. Last thing we need to trim and not poke a hole in. What a fun little object. And this is like actually donut size, which makes me hungry. <laughs> so cute. I'm obsessed. Are they not the bomb? How cute is that? Surely someone has done this before, right? Like I didn't invent this. I can't. Donut saucers, there's no way. But um, I've never seen it. So here's how everything's looking. I'm very excited. Things have not had the opportunity to crack yet, but I'm excited. <laughs> um, I do, I'm gonna add little handles on these. I'm gonna add some lids. I'm gonna add some extra things, but it's getting kind of late. So I'm just going to procrastinate and do that tomorrow. There's no reason why you couldn't do that right away. Like right after trimming is usually when you add the handles, but I'm just gonna do it tomorrow. Um, yeah, and I'm also gonna add some details. I think I'm gonna try some carving, but let's see. But so in the meantime, I'm going to wrap these up really well. Um, I'm gonna probably spray them with some water, 
so that they can stay wet um, and hopefully homogenize a little bit. And even drying is my only hope at this point that these are going to survive. Okay, so see you guys tomorrow. Okay, so it's the next day and I'm actually really glad I left these under plastic for the night because the water levels have really homogenized quite nicely. These have actually gotten a bit more wet and these a bit more dry and yeah. Uh, so they're a bit more even, which will really help with the cracking. So today is just about finishing them up, adding handles, adding little details. I might do some carving, uh, but just adding a little bit of extra spice to make them look nice. <laughs> so I know what I'm gonna do with my sugar bowl, so I'm just gonna start with her. So first I wanna add a little handle on the top here so it can be lifted out a little bit nicer. And I'm going to use this red, this crazy red clay that I have. So what I did with this one is I just added a stain to my clay and uh, got it to be this beautiful red color. I mean, maybe it's more like pink. Um, I do actually have an online class that covers how to stain clay. So if you're interested, I think it's only like 15 bucks. It's a pretty quick and cheap one. <laughs> um, so you can go check that out if you like. But the reason I'm choosing this is because I have the red grog in here. So you can't really see it now, or maybe you can. There's red grog in there. So I just think it will look like it matches. And then we're gonna clean this up uh, one thing at a time. Maybe add some more some more things to it. So my plan is to just make like a very tactile kind of look. Not too fussy to kind of look like it was just blobbed on. Nothing too fussy. Showing the fingerprint is always so nice. Perfect. Next, I just wanna sharpen up this edge a little bit. So I could go back onto the wheel to do this, but I don't really wanna make my wheel dirty again. It's nice and clean. So I'm just going to go by hand and I'm using this, using this sharp edge trimming tool to just define that edge. And then I'm using the back of my thumb as a rib. So you could get a ribbon here, but since it's so tiny, I like to use the back of my thumb, like my thumbnail, just to burnish that. So I'm having some scratches from the grog that will get burnished out or any other inconsistencies. That will also help push the grog back in. You can use your fingernails just like a rib. Kind of want to add some carving here, but I'm scared because of the <laughs> uh, the grog, because the grog is gonna make it so uneven looking. I think let's not do too much and we just leave it like this. I think this is good. Because we also have the little detail up here. That's nice. Okay, so next I want to work on my pitcher. Um, obviously this needs a handle. Um, but I think first I'm going to make a handle for the pitcher itself. Um, I want it to be very almost cartoonish, like a coil, a very perfect coil bent. That's the idea. And, and I want to be careful. I mean, ideally I'd put this through the extruder, but the thing about the extruder is it does always waste a bit of clay and this red clay is way too precious to waste. It's just the stain costs so much. I also don't want to clean the extruder. <laughs> so I'm gonna just try and roll as consistent of a coil as I can. Yeah, that's the thickness that I want. So to get rid of these fingerprints, I'm going to just roll it. I'm not really pushing anymore with my hands. I'm just rolling it back and forth and that should smooth it out. You can always make it shorter. Sticking something like that. You can mess with the curve once it's attached. But I think this is the right amount of clay. Okay, this keeps 
sagging. I want it to be more like, maybe I just need to shape it more. Yeah, more like, more square, I guess. This will really be the test for cracking. Cause these types of handles always crack anyway. It's so thick, but um, we're gonna test it. Okay, this is going straight under plastic. I'm gonna do the handle of the pitcher lid in the same way that I did the sugar bowl, but um, different clay. When you're attaching two pieces, something I really like to tell my students is you kind of like twist it as you attach and that really helps to get um, a stronger bond. Once you can't turn it anymore, then it's like attached. I'm just gonna squish it now. Okay, moving on to our cups. These are my favorite at this point. They're so cute. So I'm going to put little handles on them. Um, similar to my sugar bowl and um, like all the handles I've been doing before, but they need to be a little bit more weighty because um, this is gonna be heavier than a lid. So I'm gonna do like a squish with like multiple fingers. This is the idea anyway. Never done this before. Let's give it a try. So first I'm gonna make sort of like a lug, making something like that. I'm gonna need to squish it a lot though because um, I don't want it to be too thick. Actually, maybe this is too much clay even. I'm gonna make it a little smaller. Here we are attached. Now we need to squish. So I'm gonna do two fingers, thumb, and then one on the bottom because I'm thinking that's a nice way to pick up a cup. I want it to feel natural. So I'm just gonna squeeze. Looks a bit like an ear. <laughs> Actually, I think I'm gonna round this out a little bit more just for the look of it. The last one is the creamer, but I don't think I'm gonna do anything to this one. I think he's perfect as he is. So I'm just gonna yeah, doesn't need a lid, doesn't need a handle. I really like how this feels. Okay, last thing I'm going to do is add some little waves on this edge here. I can't make the cuts too deep because otherwise the coffee will pour out of that instead of the spout. So we're just gonna make them nice and subtle. Nice and subtle. I can smooth these out with my finger so they're not so sharp. I'm gonna add some squiggles to this guy too, although we're gonna see how easy it is to carve into this groggy clay. Done. I think I'm seriously at risk of doing too much to these, so I'm going to call it here. Um, I'm going to let these slow dry over the course of the next week. So first I'm going to wrap them up once again so all of the fresh clay can homogenize with the leather hard clay. Uh, I'll maybe leave it under plastic for one to two days and then I'll unwrap it and slow dry it under some cloth. This is the stuff that I use. So yeah, I'll see you guys when they're dried out and we're ready to load these into the kiln. See you then. So a little bit of 
cracking around these connection points. We'll see if they survive. They are still attached. I thought maybe they would have popped off completely in the kiln, but look, attached. Just a hairline crack, but hopefully the glaze will fill that. What the actual heck, you guys? These are so freaking cute. <laughs> I was like 99% sure that at least these handles would pop off uh, due to the difference in the clays. And I was thinking that they wouldn't actually stick together, especially when you're not integrating the clays at all. You're just like sticking it on top. It's crazy. And I'm so obsessed with these pops of red. I actually thought I had done the donuts in red and that would have been really nice but i didn't it's fine so let's talk about each piece um the cups are so great they're not super stable like they they could they can fall but i'm thinking if there's liquid in it it may not <laughs> we can try it out but the handles are shockingly comfortable so they're definitely like right hand user handles because it conforms to the thumb here and the two fingers on this side but if, as long as you have your uh, third finger on the bottom it's surprisingly uh, not hard to hold at all <laughs> and voila it looks like a little uh, floaty <laughs> I think my favorite one is the sugar jar. I love the combination of different clays here. It's so cute with its little red handle and it just fits really nice. It just feels like a good jar. <laughs> and then I have this double layer on the inside of a bowl and then the outside. The clay definitely blistered a lot, um, but to be honest, I like that. I think it looks so cool and organic and interesting. You can see the green grog bits that I was peeling out all the time. There's definitely some bits in there still. Um, so it looks really good. The one thing that didn't come out so well is the um, grog. So the red grog that I mixed in, you just can't see it so well. It's, I think I should have used it with a lighter clay because this clay is already quite tan. Uh, and it has the brown speckles. You don't see the red speckles as much, but that's okay. It's subtle. And now this beauty, this masterpiece here, I freaking love this picture. It's so gorgeous. I love the undulating rim. The lid is okay. I, I think I wish I had done more of a standard uh, lid like this one. This feels a little bit like an afterthought but it just looks so cool. Love the red handle, obsessed. Creamer, so nice, subtle, perfect. I love uh, that I didn't add a handle because this just feels so good in the hand. And I think that this subtle little detail of undulation on the foot is just 
enough. Overall, I feel like I took an insane risk with this project. I know I didn't follow the brief entirely, but um, this was still very much pushing it for me to mix these clays in this way I have not actually done before. And I think it turned out so well that I, I feel like I'm just like so inspired right now. Like I have all these no, new ideas. I wanna make more colored clay. I love the mixture of the very primary color with the uh, more organic colors that just come from the reclaim. I just think that's so exciting. <laughs> so um, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, there's going to be one more Pottery Throwdown episode coming your way in about three weeks, I'm thinking. Very excited about this one. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna outdo this one, but I'm definitely gonna try. <laughs> so I'll see you guys then. Bye friends.